He thinks that I nag and am too controlling. I think he doesn't take accountability and he thinks he doesn't get al enough alone time with friends. I would like more quality time together even though we live together. I get stressed from the kids and he doesn't help me as much as I need. What should I do? Okay, babe. Well, first, I understand the stress of trying to manage a household, manage taking care of kids, you know, work life if you work, trying to balance your own self-care and take care of what you need. Um, trying to balance a social life in the midst of all that, trying to keep a healthy relationship while you're at it. I get that that can be very overwhelming and stressful a lot of the times, um, especially now in this generation more than ever before. So I hear you and I validate what you're going through. I validate, you know, the, the stress that you're really encountering um, trying to balance all of these things in everyday life. But um, just to give you a little bit more perspective on how to manage this kind of stress and um, maybe work overload, because taking care of kids and running a household is work. Um, it is very hard work. And I admit, I don't take care of kids. Um, but I do take care of a household and um, also work and also try to keep a balance of, you know, staying connected uh, socially. Um, but my sister, um, she actually, she she's a mom of two now. She has a newborn and a two-year-old. She's a full-time stay-at-home mom. But it's no doubt that it can be very stressful when dad is off at work trying to provide and um, she's at home with the two babies who are very much in their neediness right now because they have to be right they, they have no other choice um, so I get it I hear you and um, just understand that you're not alone in feeling the overwhelm of it okay but um, first I want you to take a breath and take a moment to yourself and it might sound really cheesy, um, but come back to a place of gratitude, a place of just remembering that you're grateful for what you have. You have a beautiful family. You have a lot of connection in your life. You have a loving partner um, who comes home to you every night and provides. Um, you have a safe and sound home to come come home to. Um, you have a roof over your head, food on the table. All of these things can so easily get blurred through the midst of the chaos of everyday life. And we really forget to be grateful for these things. And I get it, right? I get it. It's just human nature for us to forget that we sh we're supposed to be grateful for it. And sometimes it's even hard for us to admit that we're grateful for it because we think that the grass is greener on the other side. Wherever it is that we want to be, we think that the grass is greener. Um, but then when you really practice that gratitude, um, you start to really change the way you show up. Um, you change energetically. You um, and, and maybe at first you might have to be very mindful of, you know, when you lay your head down at night, Thank you, God. I'm so grateful to have this loving family. I'm so grateful to have this beautiful home that's that's clean and I feel safe in here. You know, all of these things that um, we, we should be grateful for, we might have to just have a lot of mindfulness at first. And that's okay, you know, whatever it takes. But we real we can we can then step back and, and realize that there are millions of people out there today who are lonelier than ever before. Um, people that are, 
you know, that live by themselves. They don't have, they have an empty nest. Um, they don't have a family at home to connect to every day. Um, and they just don't have what you have. And um, they also struggle with the lack of connection. So it's just kind of our human instinct to assume that our perspectives are right and the other person's perspectives are wrong. We all want to be right. We feel like if we blame them for not doing something that we think that they're supposed to be doing, that that is how we can get them to see our point of view and then change their ways. Um, but take a look in the mirror and question yourself and be honest with yourself. Um, if you are showing up naggy to him, if you are maybe coming off a bit too controlling, because, you know, why would he say that if, if that maybe wasn't true? So be honest with yourself if you are showing up very naggy towards him. Um, it can be a huge turnoff to, to men. I, actually, it's, it's really a huge turnoff to anyone, honestly, because it just comes from a place of neediness and a place of expectations of if you don't show up in a certain way, I can't be happy, and then the other person feels burdened because you're not happy um, unless they're doing things the perfect way way. So give him room to make mistakes. Look, I come from a line of women in my family who loved to complain, loved to nag, loved to be a bit controlling, um, and just really heavy, toxic energy. Um, and I always, uh, I always assured myself that that wasn't the energy that I ever wanted to carry into any of my relationships, whether that be friends, family members, marriage, a partner, anyone. I never wanted to carry on those qualities because I could see so clearly that they weren't helping uh, any situation. Um, it was just kind of like, just a headache, right? I would, I would hear them do these, have these really bad habits and it just felt really uneasy within my body. So try to understand your partner's point of view. When you can just try to understand his point of view and validate that that's what he's uh, that's what he's feeling and that's what he's collecting from how you show up to him. Validate that that's been his experience and then he will mirror that back to you. He will probably also start to validate that you see him as this way and then he sees you as this way. So when you start to understand each other's point of view that's when you can move forward and come to a conclusion um, and have better communication with one another, okay? But we gotta first start by valid validating each other's experiences um, in order to sort those things out. You can't force him to change and he can't force you to change. Um, when we do, that is, there's always gonna be resistance on the other person's behalf. Um, because we all don't want to feel like we're not being enough for somebody that we care deeply about, right? There's always going to be a resistance there when we try to force change onto the other person. We feel like uh, we're not good enough for them, and so that's why we tend to push back and resist. Now, I often teach on here the male and female hormonal cycles and how they affect us in our relationships and basically men run on one hormonal cycle and they cycle through every 24 hours and we women run on a 28 day cycle so you see how drastically different that alone is and 
if we really look at the bigger picture, how that's affecting us of how we show up um, in community with one another. Men run, um, they have the most energy in the morning times. And by the evening time, that's when they start wi winding down and de decompressing. Now, in the morning times, when they have the highest testosterone levels, um, I would suggest that you start to approach him very femininely and very softly because he has those very high testosterone levels, which can trigger your uh, high amounts of feminine energy towards him. Um, and so that's why it's the best time for you to approach or propose to him to get him to help you to do things, maybe to help you do something for the day that would make your workload taking care of the kids easier. So for example, you know, asking him to take out the trash before he leaves for work. Um, maybe asking him to fold a load of laundry before he goes off to work. You know, whatever it is that you could use a lot of help with, ask him in the morning times when he has all that energy um, and when you are able to be the most feminine with him and um, approach it from that standpoint um, because in in the evening time after they come home from work and they've exerted a lot of their testosterone while out there providing and protecting um, that's when he's going to want to wind down and take it a bit easier and maybe have a little bit more time to himself um, even wanting to be more connected to you know you and the family um, and so let him recuperate when he gets home from work that way all those things that you could have asked for him to do in the morning are already taken care of and you're not like burden burdening him with more stress after he's been doing all that hard work for you. Does that make sense? So even though you've also yourself been experiencing a lot of hard work in the day with managing the household and the kids, um, you're also experiencing a lot of love in doing that because you're nurturing, you know, you're, you're really exerting those feminine qualities. You're being a mother, you're nurturing, um, maybe you're cooking, maybe you're cleaning, you know, these things are really, it's, it's built into us to um, have the drive to do these things for our family. And it's, it's, it's even more rewarding when, when we have a family that um, dwells in it. So decide for the betterment of you and your relationship with him that when he gets off of work, you'll let him recuperate and take some time alone to himself or go into his man cave and play his games if that's what he's into and even though I don't really personally agree with the whole gaming obsession with our modern men um, it is what it is and it's it's a habit and it's an addiction for them um, but that aside you can come up with a system with one another where you allow him that time to do what it is that he wants on a game, you know, maybe an hour window. And within that hour window, you can kind of rest a little bit or maybe take time to do what, what you please to do um, since he's around and you can kind of both keep an eye out on the kids. You can just kind of do something for yourself too. Um, maybe if you want, if you have a hobby that you don't get to work on during the day while you're managing the children. Um, if you like to paint or if you like to draw or if you like to dance or if you want to go for a run outside, you know, he's home and can really um, keep an eye out for the kids even while he's doing his own thing. Um, at least there's somebody out else there, another parent in the household. So you can come up with that kind of system with one another since it also pertains to uh, the male hormonal cycle. Now, at nighttime, that is when their testosterone levels are the lowest, and so they will feel a, a, a wanting more to connect with you. The difference is that us women, we always have a need to connect. Um, we 
crave connection. We are relationship oriented much, much more than men are. So that's kind of where we can start to cause a little friction in our partnerships because we always kind of need that connection and men, you have to kind of give it to them in intervals. And so since his testosterone levels are going to be the lowest in the evening and nighttime, I would suggest that if you're feeling a lack of connection with him, communicate it to him, but add emotion and feeling into it when you do. You can say something like, babe, I feel so distant from you lately and I just miss you. I miss our connection at the end of a long day. You know, I miss us spending quality time together or us watching a movie together or us, you know, playing with the kids and um, enduring in our laughter together. Just add that emotion and feeling into what you are truly feeling inside because that is truly what you're needing from him is that connection and you're feeling a lack of it and you're feeling kind of sorrowful that it hasn't been there lately. So say that you feel really distant from him and that you really miss him. And that way you're taking away any burden of, you know, expectation onto him or burden of this sort of aggressive neediness onto him. And you're just communicating what emotion is happening inside of your heart and body. Because usually when we feel like we're not getting enough quality time with our partner, um, it's because we're feeling emotionally disconnected from them um, and we're not feeling like emotionally intimate enough. Does that make sense? We're not feeling emotionally close enough. Like they're really understanding what we're going through. Like we're really under, they're really understanding um, what's happening in our lives and maybe, you know, hearing out all of our frustrations for the day. Um, and there's a way to intelligently communicate um, what's happening in inside of us throughout all the frustrations or even throughout all the, the joyful and happy moments that we want to share with our partner. Um, we have to kind of bring that back um, into our partnership in order to um, keep that bond of emotional connection very strong. So sometimes um, like what you don't want to do, like I said, is put blame onto him that he's not giving you what you need. Um, and rather, you know, this might mean that you need to take some time for yourself and process what is really happening inside of you and what's happening during the day that maybe set you off and um, let that just kind of flow in and out like a wave in the ocean before you come back to him and approach him with those emotional needs. Does that make sense? So um, sometimes when we just like react to things um, because it's just like spur of the moment, we just have a trigger and we just kind of react. Um, this can cause a lot, a, a, lot of, a lot of unnecessary drama that could be avoided had we just, you know, let it processed within ourselves, dealt with it, decided if it was really worth talking about, or if it was um, something that was just kind of came up and then it's a wave that's just flown on by, or, you know, you know what I mean. So let yourself come back to your rational thinking when those kind of emotional needs come up. And that way you can then approach him with, um, you know, how you're feeling very distant and you just miss him. You, you miss the connection um, with him. You know, emotions sometimes can just overtake us and cause us to say things that we don't necessarily mean to say. Um, and so that's why we really have to have the wisdom to process it and then discern what things need to be brought to the table and what things can just be let go, you know, just process through and then let go. So all in all, to kind of wrap this up, 
I suggest that you, one, take accountability if you are being naggy and controlling to him. And these are really all just habits, bad habits that we end up forming that become a routine for us to just dump out all of our junk that builds up inside and burden our partner with um, negativity and neediness. So take accountability if you are showing up that way and understand that that kind of energy is very repelling to him. Um, secondly, try to work on a system of, you know, where he, you ask him to do a few things if you need him to in the morning before he leaves for work when he has the highest testosterone levels. And then the system of when he comes home from work, he gets time to do whatever it is that he pleases and you kind of get a little bit more time to do what it is that you please. And then after that, you know, hour or two hours or whatever it is that you come up with passes, then you come back together and connect with each other, connect vulnerably, connect emotionally. Lastly, when you are feeling neediness and a bit of disconnect from him, and this is inevitable because these things are inevitably going to come up anytime that we are in a partnership with somebody because our partner has the power to trigger all of these past wounds, these past childhood issues within us. And so those things are inevitably going to come up. That sense of neediness is going to come up. But remember that you can deal with those things and process them through yourself and then femininely um, communicate it with feeling and emotion that you miss him. You know, you're feeling very distant from him. You're feeling like, you know, you're not getting the quality time that maybe you once did in the past. Um, you can very much learn to break out of those old habits of just kind of being aggressive and uh, burdening him and rather approach him softly. At the end of the day, you have your triggers and he has his triggers and just attacking each other, triggering each other further and creating this friction and fire is not going to result in any, th any kind of healthy communication or any kind of healthy polarity, okay? So we want to avoid those old habits of complaining, nagging, and bitching. <laughs> and um, just be honest about um, those triggers that are coming up for you and... Um, I think if you can work on getting rid of those old habits and um, finding better ways to communicate what you're experiencing with him, then um, it'll you know work out for you. And it may take some time with a little bit of help and guidance, and you know to keep watching videos like this, my content, and you know of course so many other great relationship coaches out there. Um, it will happen for you. It will happen for you, but you have to see all the good things about him and the good things that he's doing for you and the, you know, fantastic ways that he's showing up and the loving ways that he's showing up and that he's going to work every day and providing and protecting for you because that is how men show their love for their families, okay? So you have to focus more so on those positive traits rather than getting blinded by all those um, yucky and, you know, bad energy, negative traits about him, which again can just be human instinct to, um, you know, focus in on that because our minds are just always looking for the danger and the fears. Um, but you can rewire your brain to be able to, um, instead see the positive qualities rather than the negative qualities. So I hope that this helped you and made sense and hopefully it wasn't too all over the place. Um, thank you guys so much for sending in all of your questions and usually I get back to every single one of you so never be afraid to email me or send me a DM on TikTok, Instagram, or Facebook, whatever you choose. My email um, will be listed in the description box down below. I do offer one-on-one -on -one coaching as well if you are 
wanting to um, invest into that or you have a certain situation that you really need more insight on because I can only gain so much information from, you know, a couple paragraphs uh, in, a, in a DM. So um, if you work with me, I'm able to learn a little bit more about you and, you know, how you show up energetically and what's going on in your relationship dynamic. Um, and then I'm just better able to help you navigate through that and come up with a solution to um, enhance your feminine energy. Okay. So I hope that you found this to be helpful. And of course, subscribe if you are not already. And until the next video, I will talk to you guys soon. Bye.